I am reading How Machines Work, Construction Vehicles. The last book told you what machines worked on a site. This book explains how those machines work, the science behind them. The huge machines that are used to build roads, bridges, tunnels, and buildings are construction vehicles. Many of them use levers and pulleys. A lever is a tool that allows work to be done more easily. It does this by magnifying the effort that is put into lifting, pulling, pushing, or turning. The bigger the lever, the more effort is increased. Bottle openers, wheelbarrows, and crawl bores are all examples of simple levers. How levers work. All levers involve effort, a falcon, and a load. The effort is the work done, such as lifting, pulling, and turning. The falcon is the place where the level pivots or turns. The load is the object you want to move. So if you look in this picture, the wheel right here, that is the falcon. The load is what's in the wheelbarrow, and the effort is how much it's moving. Pulleys. Another tool used by construction vehicles is the pulley. The more pulleys used to lift a weight, the less effort it takes. Mechanical diggers need massive strength for scooping, lifting, and carrying. Huge Huge hydraulic arms give them the power they need to break up soil and rubble. In an excavator, hydraulic fluid moves a piston up and down a cylinder. When fluid is pumped into the top of the cylinder, the piston moves down and the dipper arm moves up. The liquid is pumped into the bottom of the cylinder, the piston moves up and the dipper arm moves down. In a hydraulic system, a force applied in one place is transferred to another place by squeezing a liquid. As hydraulic fluid is pumped into the cylinder, the small force at one end passes along the pipe and turns into a big force at the other end. A backhoe let Loader is a tractor, loader, and backhoe all in one. The loader at the front can scoop, lift, and carry. The backhoe at the rear of the machine can dig trenches and lift heavy loads. When the backhoe loader is working, hydraulic fluid pushes out jacks called stabilizers. These steady the machine and make the weight take the weights off the wheels and tires. In construction machines, hydraulic systems move rams and jacks. A ram is a cylinder and piston that acts like the muscles of your arm. It pushes and moves parts around. Rams can be found on excavators. Jacks are also cylinders and pistons. They work like legs and feet to support and steady machines while they work. Imagine the force needed to hammer huge steel and concrete rods into the solid ground. Powerful machines called pile drivers do this work. A pile driver works like a giant hammer. A heavy weight is lifted high into the air. The weight is dropped again and again onto steel or concrete piles to drive them into the ground. Phenomic pile drivers use compressed air to raise a heavy piston inside a cylinder. The piston is dropped. The cylinder contains a mixture of fuel and air. Friction heats the mixture. The mixture ignites, forcing the piston back up. The cylinder reopens until the machine is stopped.
blasting. A compressor like a pump, but instead of air, it pumps high-pressured air. Compressors can produce high-pressure air for sandblasters, which clean the outside of buildings. They can also power spray painting machines, which produce an even coating of paint across a large wall or fence. Pneumic drills used by construction crews work very much like compressed air pile drivers. Instead of a hammer, the drills have tough steel blades to break up soil and tarmac. The air that works the pistons in a pneumic drill is forced into the cylinder by a compressor. How the pneumic drill works. First, number one, upstroke. Squeezing the control lever lets compressed air into the drill. The air flows under the piston, forcing it up. Air is pushed up above the piston. This lets a blast of compressed air into the top of the cylinder. The air slams the piston down into the drill tool. Cranes use a series of simple pulleys to lift and move heavy weights, sometimes to the top of a building more than 20 stories high. At any large, site, large construction site, you will see tall cranes towering above the skyline. At the base of the crane is a huge concrete block. Huge bolts embedded deep into the concrete support the base and keep the crane firmly anchored to the ground. How a pulley works. A, pull, a double pulley system like this halves the effort needed to move a load, but the cable must be pulled twice as far. Okay, so that you're pulling here, and as you pull, uh, the cable uses the pulleys to lift up the heavy e equipment. How a crane builds itself. How is it that a crane is able to rise as the building grows taller? The answer is that a crane builds itself. First, the base is weighted with concrete and the jib is assembled on the ground. Then a mobile crane lifts a climbing frame onto the base. The cab and jib are put on top of the frame. The climbing frame has hydraulic rams which raise the cave up to the height of each new section. Okay, so here they go. The, the cab is here. And this right here is the climbing frame. Okay, so we have a counterweight here. And this is the new section slots into a position here, and then they kind of build on itself. That's pretty cool. To reach the cab, the operator either travels in a hoist, which is a type of lift, or climbs a ladder inside the tower. The trolley allows the load to be moved along the jib. It is pulled backward and forward by cables wound around the trolley drum. The crane's counterweight is made from heavy concrete blocks. It balances the weight of the jib and the load and stops the load from pulling the crane over. Did you know that screws are not, not, not only hold things together, but they can also drill holes, carry a load, or pump up the mixed materials? Several construction machines use screws and augers. An auger is a screw with a wide thread that can be used to carry a load. A construction auger is used to drill holes for pipes or the piles for foundations. As the auger drills down, the soles spiral its way up along the thread. When the auger is full of soil, it is lifted out of the hole and cleared. It is then lowered back down to join drilling, to continue drilling. The 
The drum of a concrete mixer truck contains a spiring screw head. When it turns one way, the spiring screw, screw, screw thread inside the mixes the concrete. When it turns the other way, the screw pushes the concrete to the mouth of the drum ready for pouring. So depending on which way it's spinning, depends on, tells you what's going to happen with the concrete that's inside. Tunnel boring machines are like giant drills. They can cut their way underground through soil, mud, and soft rocks. TBMs are used to build huge tunnels to carry roads and railroad tracks through mountains, under cities, rivers, and even under the ocean. The PDM's cutting thread is driven by a huge electric motor. As the head turns, its cutting rollers and teeth cut into the rock or soil ahead. A long rotating auger scoops up and carries the soil and ground up rock from the TBM's cutting head. This waste is lifted onto a conveyor belt. The belt carries the waste back along the TBM and dumps it in railroad tracks. The railroad trucks take it out of the tunnel. As the TBM bores forward, huge concrete segments are fitted in place behind it to stop the tunnel from collapsing. Some of the toughest construction jobs are done by machines that push and shove. They use huge engines and steel blades to clear rocks, soil, and trees. A bulldozer starts the work for a road, airport runway, or railroad track. Its huge metal blade can clear anything in its path. The driver can angle the bulldozer's blade to control where the soil and other materials are pushed. Bulldozers don't get stuck in mud because their weight is spread over wide crawler tracks. Here's the inside of the bulldozer. It says here the blade controls control a joystick. It raises, lowers, and tilts the blade. Um, and then there's a back pedal, brake pedal, that just the speed of the bulldozer and stops it. Um, and here is the steering wheel. A grinder has a cutting blade that is curved like a knife. Its job is to level the ground before a new road is laid. The grader's engine is nearly ten times as powerful as a family car and twice as powerful as a bulldozer. A grader it has huge wide tires with deep treads to spread its weight and stop it from getting stuck on muddy ground. As it moves forward, the grader's knife-like blade slices off the top layer of soil and rubble. In a scraper, soil and rubble are pushed into a container called a bowl by a conveyor belt of metal blades. The blades turn as the scraper moves. Those metal blades, which move like the stairs of an escalator, are called the elevator. The scraper bowl can hold a load of more than 55 tons of rubble. That's interesting. Road paving machines are designed to lay a flat ribbon of asphalt road or airport runway. Any bumps would be a nightmare for fast traffic or aircraft. Road paving machines move very slowly. The hopper is a container that is constantly filled with steamy, hot asphalt. Steel conveyor chains carry the asphalt to the rotating blades of the auger, which spread the asphalt on the ground. So that's how they lay the roads. Road paving machine also flattens and smooths the asphalt with a heavy vibrating attachment called the screed. It works a bit like a hot iron. 
Electronic heaters inside the screen produce heat so that it creates a smooth finish to the asphalt. That's pretty cool. To make a road strong and firm, it is made of many layers. Each layer must be flattened until it is hard and smooth. Rollers and rammers use weight and vibrations for this work. The greatest weight comes from a large roller. The roller is driven backwards and forward over the layers of the road, flattening and smoothing them with its heavy wheels. The front and back wheels of rollers can be steered separately. Smaller rollers are used for, for laying pavements of or repairing roads. The vibration, drum vibration as it rolls, packing the surface below to make it really solid. A rammer machine also vibrates or flattens strips of sand, gravel, or asphalt. It packs down the ground ten times harder when it is vibrating than when it is still. The end. Hope you enjoyed that, everyone.